welcome to I Have Notes, the show where people with surprisingly full IMDb pages discuss all things animation and creative. I'm your host, Issa Badiola, and alongside my co-host, Carrie Shawcross. Hello. Uh, with us, we also have... Me. Hi, I'm Erin Wynn. And I'm last, I'm Jordan. Hello. <laughs> the last? Is that, that going to be your thing now? <laughs> the last of us. I'm the oh, last of one. Oh, too soon. Too soon. Uh, Last of Us too soon. Uh, oh, oh, that is appropriate, isn't it? How is everyone doing? <laughs> Good. We're I, hanging in there, aren't we? Doing okay. This is a uh, interesting way for us to start this show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. This isn't how it was drawn up, was it? <laughs> when we you know. first it. Nope. It's. it's uh, you gotta. You gotta roll the punches, and you gotta. You gotta. That's the creative process, isn't it? You know. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, a lot of it comes from adapting to situations that are less than ideal. And yeah, what's funny which... what's funny is that we were trying to avoid this situation as long as possible. Like we were supposed to premiere the show like last month and yeah, we were worried about I mean. Carrie going to Japan and having to be quarantined <laughs> for 2 weeks and now we're all quarantined. So what the fuck did it matter? Yeah, why the fuck did I go to Japan then? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 2020 is off to a great start, guys. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to sell some turnips on this person's island. Real uh, Jordan he admits, it. He admits it. Yeah, Jordan. We are. This is the inaugural episode. They're going for 538 bells. I don't have. Oh, like, there's just no excuse to not do it. No, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to give you shit, but I really can't if they're going for that much. I uh, yeah, I'm so a lazy piece of shit. the conversation going without me. Uh, I could. I, got I could talk about the here. I want to sell. I could talk about the fact that I forgot to buy them, but instead, uh, why don't we talk about a little bit, Issa, we can talk about what the show, I think, is supposed to kind of be about. Uh, we are all, I'm going to say the douchiest thing I've ever said before, we are all creatives. Ooh, so douchey. Right? You guys too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and I don't know, I think we, for the longest time, we just wanted to have something where we could talk about the creative process and also just anything really um i think there's a lot that you know whether it's tv books uh anime movies anything really uh that we want to be, have a way to just kind of like discuss and i think something that i can't remember who brought it up with those isa or jordan uh being very positive i think is something <laughs> that is really important to all of us especially right now yes. uh i think there's a lot in uh there's a lot of comedy in being negative and being kind of uh, critical of things. And there's also a lot of niceness and joy. Man, I, and I, I think it's just as funny when you're forced to say something nice, right? <laughs> you don't want to say something nice about something. Yes. Like when you have to, when you have to force yourself to be constructive and the struggles there, I think, I, I think that's funny. And I think it, you know, it's not negative. That that's you know what that is not negative is the opposite of positive so you're correct. <laughs> that all works out. Um, so I was kind of thinking maybe we kind of go around and just talk a little bit about who we are, what we do day to day, maybe a little bit of how we got here. Uh, that way people uh, have a reason to give a shit about what we're talking about at all. Um, uh, you said <laughs> you yeah, want to go first. Up. Yeah, turn me last, yet? please. <laughs> Jordan, you're going last <laughs> for multiple reasons. <laughs> I'm Issa Mattiola. I said the intro already. Um, yep. Yeah, you <laughs> sure did. In case you forgot. Uh, I'm a director for Rooster Teeth, uh, Rooster Teeth's direct division. We recently changed titles and all the departments, so it, it takes a bit. But um, uh, I'm a director, mostly specialized in uh, the 2D animation side. Uh, I actually started off in the company as just an animator in 2015 and i was able to rise the ranks as a director and now i get to tell people what to do and i get a little stressed out about it sometimes what <laughs> no stress stress in never my day and age <laughs> never heard of it <laughs> no uh, stress no fear well here aaron you can go next what stresses oh. you out and fear and uh, fears you being, fears being put on the spot yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've recently been promoted to art director for a little show called Ruby. Don't know if you've heard of it. I have um, Yeah, definitely not. You, Gary. Um, yeah, I started also in 2015. 
Uh, I started out as a concept artist on Ruby, and I've kind of worked on other projects for Rooster since then, like RV, done a little bit of Camp Camp. Um, yeah, and now I'm mostly focused on Ruby. Yeah. Aaron and oh, yeah. I started at the same year, and that's when we became friends. Yes. <laughs> Jordan, do you want to not go last, or do you want to I'm, go last? I'm almost back. I got two million bells. I'm landing back on my island. I'm going to say. All right, Carrie, you got to go. Right. You got to go. Hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Carrie. I uh, currently, I am the uh, the showrunner. I don't, I don't know what my title is anymore. I'm the showrunner. I'm the supervising director for Ruby. Uh, so I kind of help manage both, like, the franchise that's weird to say uh Valid. i hate that uh of ruby as well as just you know the day-to-day -day directing of ruby along with the episode directors and uh co-writers um and yeah i've been at this company for way too long uh <laughs> i'm 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 getting close to 10 years wow. uh, which hurt saying <laughs> out loud uh not because i don't like the company but because it makes me feel old um but uh, yeah, I've done a lot of other things around the company. I kind of started when uh, everybody was doing everything. Um, so, uh, but I definitely liked animation the most. Although sometimes I regret not going to Achievement Hunter, but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. We don't talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> who are they? Who? Achievement yeah, exactly. Who? Never heard of them. <laughs> uh, me real quick. My name's Jordan Swears. Um, I started animating uh, by myself like self-taught and one of the first things i animated was uh, a story from the rooster teeth podcast that gus saw and then next thing i know i'm moving out here uh i'm making cartoons next thing i know after that i'm directing cartoons and the next thing after that i'm the creative director for the whole department and i don't know how it happened but um yeah done done a lot of uh animating a lot of writing and directing um camp camp no matter nowhere x-ray and vav um and now kind of kind of heading up like managing all creative efforts and stuff so this is kind of part of part of that uh as well so you know trying to establish a, a better uh you know relationship like us communicating with the audience so that you guys know what's mm. going on at Rooster Teeth Animation and stuff like that. So um really looking forward to how this goes. Basically we just want to rip off off topic. <laughs> also uh, I should they? add I am who? a multi millionaire in Animal Crossing now. Good so. job, yeah. Jordan. Very proud. Uh, I'm retiring. Goodbye everybody. <laughs> oh, Did man, you are I you gonna pay off your house loan? <laughs> oh I've I've that's been like did weeks. you see that oh. genuine look of disgust he just gave you <laughs> for questioning oh, whether that's or not cute. you still have house loans oh my god i hope everyone also knows that i also had a genuine look of disgust when he <laughs> <went> away. <laughs> disgusting Please. um so hopefully uh people are watching and listening to this as it comes out uh i'm also going to assume that uh, obviously this is going to become one of the most popular podcasts of all time. Oh, and yeah. in a hundred years from now, oh, people yeah. will still be discovering it, uh, on a flash drive, uh, buried <laughs> in a, in like a, a vase under old New York or whatever. Uh, oh, but, uh you mean New uh, Amsterdam? <laughs> yeah. New Jersey. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so we're recording this at the end of April of 2020 uh and there's a, an american or there's a worldwide quarantine going on right now as yes. i'm sure everybody again who's listening right now is aware uh so we're all working from home and i thought something that could be interesting is just talking about uh what that's like um first off i the one thing i was gonna say to begin with is uh we are very fortunate to be able to work from home uh so any complaining true, we're doing yeah. is uh is we know that we think could be a lot worse, but I think the thing we want to talk about is specifically like being creative. For me, the one of the hardest things has been being creative alone, being creative, ah. not in a room with people, uh, having lag, having to do stuff in discord and Google hangouts and all this stuff. So yeah, what's, uh, what's it been like for y'all, uh, not being in the office. Isa, you go first because like this happened in the middle of like the show you were directing. Oh gosh. So uh the show that we're making right now, recorded by Arisol, I we had just started. Um, and then I came back from a trip 
uh, from California, uh, from Orange County, where, where one of the first cases of COVID erupted um, or was shown. So I come back and they're like, hey, about that. And I was like, mm -hmm. dope. I'm running a show. I don't know what to do. So it was a wild ride of just kind of being told, okay, you're staying at home. And then after it's like, oh, maybe I can come back in the same day. Actually, we, we are, we're all going to stay home now. Um, that, that actually admittedly kind of took a lot out of me, but it's more so the guilt. I think it's the, um, a lot of working from home lately has been more, uh, me putting more pressure on myself, I think to perform. Um, but that's actually been, uh, affecting me more negatively. So I'm at the point now where I'm fine. It's, it's a month out and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe the solution is to not pressure myself. And it took me a month to figure that out. It's you've, you've got a, it's a journey everyone has to take, but you kind of, yeah. you have to take it yourself. You can't just be told right? like nobody wants to hear, Hey, just, just calm down. It's fine. Yeah. Cause that's I mean, not helpful. When I was, <laughs> when I was directing and show running like camp camp and stuff like being there and feeling the pressure of like everyone needing you like in the office was already stressful enough right. so like doing it at home like on, at your computer i like without any seeing anyone or what they're doing i feel like that just adds to it so i don't and i don't envy you at all <laughs> i feel really bad for you thanks, <laughs> thanks. how um because we you know obviously work in the same department but the the direct side and also especially like the 2d side and the 3d side are kind of separated a lot um how are, how inefficient is it has it been for y'all i mean like are do you do you feel like you found a rhythm yet wildly enough i think we actually were able to kind of um transition pretty smoothly if only because i think one of our one of directs um biggest benefits or I guess the biggest uh, pros to our process is we don't need as many heavy programs. Um, mm. We just need a certain number of them. And more often than not, the people that we work with already kind of have those or they're just like, hey, we just need a license for this one program that can do everything. Um, at least that's from my experience, especially working with the animators. We're and a lot of our animators on our team, especially for working with recorded by RSL, um, a lot of our animators we're able to uh, transition easy enough, but I also think they're kind of experiencing the same, like, oh, we actually miss being with other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that point where you mentioned is like being creative alone. And I didn't realize how much I, um, I think there was a point in my career where I realized, oh, I did want that. I wanted that teamwork, even though I do consider myself an introvert, it's, being with other people is kind of what helps solve problems for me. So being with, with a limited amount of people in yeah. a small space, I'm just like, this, this doesn't work, <laughs> at least not as well. <laughs> I had definitely a lot of um, adjusting. Yeah, yeah same thing. like I also consider myself like an introvert and even like just the process of leaving my apartment and going to work and coming back at night, like not having that there is just really throwing me off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like seeing people, even if I don't necessarily interact with them at the office, like it's kind of weird at this point, and I'm still kind of adjusting. Yeah, I didn't realize how happy other people made me. How oh. is it like reviewing, uh, like everyone's work and having your work reviewed, like over? I imagine Slack yeah. or if you're using Discord or whatever. Oof. I mean, for art, for concept, it's a little bit easier because it's just an image. For yeah, you're already models, looking at it on a yeah. computer. <laughs> <laughs> for models, rigging, like anything past the concept stage, it becomes very hard. It's a little frustrating at times. Yeah, but I think I we're think... definitely we're definitely navigating it a bit better, but there's definitely like a curve. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, there's like a a huge shout out just like the production and the tech team at RT Animation of like the, it. EC, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but like it kind of went from like zero. I'm sure this was the case for a lot of people, but it kind of went from like zero to 60 yeah, over yeah. the course of like five days where it was like, basically we, we came in one day and we're like, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, if you've traveled, we need people to stay home for a little bit. And then the next day it's like, we might maybe be asking people to work from home for a little bit. And then like the <laughs> next day it was like, all right, everybody's out. Like yeah. we're going to, okay. everybody's going to work yeah. from home. Good yeah. luck. Figure it out. 
Can I tell a quick story? Oh, yeah. it. Oh, uh, please do. Uh, if, the as if the quarantine, I think our quarantine went out uh, on March 13th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that day, um, somebody in my family also experienced a health issue that I had to go oh. deal with. It was not COVID related, thankfully, mm -hmm. and they're not immunocompromised. But it was like, oh, they are in the ER. Oh, there is somebody that has it. I have to go help my family member on top of, oh, now we're working from home and all this other bullshit. It kind of yeah. just like, I feel like the universe kind of just shat on March 13th. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oof. Was it a Friday? It was. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It's Friday not, the 13th. Um, it's not a suspicion. Bad. I went to the ER um, with, I have like this shirt that says death and dying over and over <laughs> and I went, I was like, I got called. I was like, okay, well, I have to go now. I went in not realizing I'm still wearing this dumbass shirt. Oh my God. I was like, uh. Aaron, you're so edgy. I know. Oh my God. Oh, edge. Aaron, so oh, too edgy for my own good. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Yeah, right. I My experience was very weird because, uh, so I was originally going to go to Japan basically right as everything got shut down here. Um, so we obviously canceled our trip and I was like, well, I'm still taking this time off because I yeah. specifically didn't take time off earlier. Um, so I started the work from home quarantine by just saying like, all right, see you all in two weeks. <laughs> Figure it out. Um, so I felt so bad. I, I felt really bad. But I know at the same you time, were going with a few of, of our other coworkers, right? Am yeah. I yeah. yeah, there's like a group of like seven of us from the company, yeah. from like Oof. from like Blaine, like like Cole, like a bunch of people, and it, it was just like we we've been playing this trip for like eleven months, I think it was yeah. it was yeah. it was like it was like ten or eleven months. So it's like Ugh. it's fine. Like again, we'll we'll no, we'll go again fine. at some time, but <laughs> it it was definitely tough. Um, but it was it was also crazy to like come back after two weeks and then like yeah, people are working. Um, you know, we got stuff like Ruby. Ruby's working pretty well so far. Where um, animation's like the last thing that we're just now getting going because uh, mm. they hadn't even started yet, mm. um, or at least at the time that all this uh, quarantine stuff started. But um, pretty much every department is able to work at mm -hmm. close to normal efficiency. Yeah, mm. um, I think we all know that you know it's it's slowing down stuff a little bit, but so far our schedule's still looking good. Nice. Well, I'm sure yeah, we'll make an announcement think... later. Yeah, is, I think like, it helped um, to be able to start so soon. I think this is like the earliest we've ever started on a new season of Ruby. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. Thanks I mean, to, to you guys really uh, getting scripts out way sooner. <laughs> yeah, they were how, still late. How has uh, <laughs> reviewing animatics and stuff worked in like over? Oof. Yeah, I imagine that's Oof. probably the trickiest thing because like that's so like timing based, and like yeah. the way we review it is like usually the editor. And the director sits in a room and you watch it and then like if you see something you like you either watch through the whole thing or and it's like all right play this part again right. and then it's all based on like feel sometimes where it's like all right stop here that's where i want the cut like yeah that it's probably impossible to do it's pretty impossible it is definitely changing <laughs> i think uh i think everybody's being a little bit more flexible you know yeah. in terms of like i'm sure there's more like heads and tails of shots they're going to move around the normal uh, yeah, there's been a lot of screen sharing. We've we've tried a lot of different software and figured out it's what just has so been. hard to like have video play over like a video call. Yeah, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah, it is. Turns out Discord not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Surprisingly, uh, buy but... stock at Discord. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh yeah that has been pretty challenging. It's uh it's funny how much we've tried to just recreate the office environment like we have like <laughs> we have like group chats named after like our conference rooms now so we can oh, like yeah. pretend oh, to be in the funny. room that's funny. oh my god that's so funny <laughs> so i do feel like a lot of people are dealing with you know yeah just being kind of alone we have a lot of people who move to austin to work here oh which is my awesome gosh. Yeah. but it's like i mean aaron didn't you you moved here i mean hell all of you moved here yeah i moved here <laughs> You yeah. did, carry. you did. So it's like, you know, we, we have a lot of people who maybe they've only been here for six months and they, you know, they're living by themselves now. Yeah, and it's, yeah they're it's, getting like a weird experience of like working here. Like, yeah. yeah. We've had a couple uh, people who started during in the this, quarantine. Yeah. During quarantine? Oh, yeah, like I know for art, we have a new coordinator who just started. Like I've never met him in person. <laughs> yeah. I've seen him a few times on Google Hangouts. It's like, all right, I guess he's helping out now. 
Oh my gosh. Someday I'll for, you, maybe. for me, the biggest thing has been like trying to stick with routine. Like I'm mm -hmm. very routine oriented. Um, mm -hmm. and at first, like it actually felt pretty good with like not having, I could sleep in a little bit. Um, I didn't have to drive to work, which like, I'm only like 10 minutes away, but for some reason that takes energy out of me. Um, yeah. it, it's yeah. like the, the 10 minute, like hyping up, like going to work thing. It's like, here's what I'm going to do when I get in. Um, now it's just walking upstairs, <laughs> Yeah. but, um, but like, I, I felt, I felt good for like the first like three weeks or so, like I had more energy and I felt pretty productive, but then, and I feel like everyone kind of hit this th at different points where it's like, I don't know what day it is. I haven't, <laughs> I, I haven't slept regular hours. I'm going to sleep at like 1am. It's yep. like, it's gotten to the point where it's like, it's like summer vacation when you're home all the time. And like oh. the, mm. the days start blending together and like you stay up later and later and, and oh, stuff. Yeah. Yep. So oh it's, God. it's been weird lately. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of, I've been a little more like having to, I don't know, be on top of myself, like as far as productivity goes, where it's like, I've been drifting more maybe towards YouTube every now and then a little <laughs> more often. And it's like, yeah. no, don't <laughs> work. Yeah. I, I definitely like, I've, I've been like, I, I've tried like a million different like to-do lists and stuff like that, but like I've definitely been like trying to make a list every day of like, okay, here's what I need to do. Here's what I need to get done. But also letting myself, you know, I think it's also a lot easier when, you know, there, you, you hit that point, you know, it's whatever time you end up leaving work, you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock and you're like, okay, I didn't get everything done today, but you know, maybe I'll come in a little early tomorrow or um, okay. like, I, I think it's okay that that thing can push. It's a lot harder. It's a lot, there's a lot more guilt. When yeah. it's like, yeah. well, I didn't finish everything I needed to do today. I'm gonna go in the other room and play video games. Yeah. Or it's... I'm gonna sit in this same chair and play a PC game. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I... That's almost like a whole other, a whole other thing. Yeah. I feel like, oh man, I, I've kind of, I've hit that point where I realize, oh, me working from home is, is not gonna be the same as just me being in a studio anymore and. I'm at the point now where I'm kind of like, you know what? Maybe that's okay. Um, <laughs> I think getting to that point is the hardest point. Like, it really is. Like, I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't gotten to the like, it's okay that it's different. It's okay that I'm not the same like amount of productive that I am yeah. in an office. It's I'm not wild there <laughs> because it's taken me a month and like two weeks to get here. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. There was a actually fun fact. I was part of this like uh, happy hour with Jordan Levin, our GM, our general manager of the company. And it was me and like a bunch of other of our coworkers from all the, all the other different departments. And it was like more like a check in, just kind of, hey, guys, like I'm here to answer any questions from Jordan Levin. And one of the nice things that he said that I'm kind of like, OK, you know, I, I think I can take that to heart if only because it's a lead alleviating me is he's like I hope people understand that when we say when I say I hope they're taking breaks it's not like 10 minutes every time you're working like you can take like a half day break it's completely okay and I was like the RGM said that so I'm like oh man that makes it okay yeah that makes it really okay that said I could so I yeah. am <laughs> I, I had to do that a couple of weeks ago where like I don't know what it was but like I just was like super overwhelmed and there's like a a big like uh department-wide meeting or something like coming up and mm. i was like dreading that and i just i slacked uh maggie who's a, a supervising producer for direct and sean uh who's the co-head of animation it was like guys i'm not feeling great is it okay if i take the rest of the day for myself and they were like yeah you know totally and i was just like even though I, all i did was like leave this room i felt so yeah. much better yeah <laughs> after that and it's like yeah like when people are like saying like check in on your mental health and stuff like doing stuff like that can help a lot like and like i don't know i was a i was kind of afraid to ask because they were gonna be like what do you have to worry about like yeah. just do your job but like you know everyone's been super understanding and stuff Every, so everybody struggles their own struggle it's yeah. you know it's, it's true it's, yeah we can't compare stuff but it's hard Especially, like oh since Go we've ahead. like never gone through anything like this before like i feel like it'd be kind of unreasonable to hold us to like a certain expectation mm -hmm. that's so. true and like i feel like i get that going out in the world too like when i go grocery shopping and stuff for some reason like the people who are have been working in like grocery stores 
like for weeks now are like apologetic to us where it's like oh i'm sorry you have to do this like thank you for understanding and it's like oh, thank God. you for working here yeah. so i can oh, buy groceries God. like uh, this procedure is the least of my concerns man <laughs> yeah, there's one like, time we're happy to do it there was one time um like we were i was at a trader joe's um and uh the person before us was definitely we called the definitely one of the panic buyers not judging but also you could tell <laughs> because their cart was so full and he was just standing there and um when it came to my turn immediately i was just like packing and helping and the lady at the cashier was like thank you so much and i was like what are you talking about this is yeah, the yeah. least i can do <laughs> yeah my, I, my mom works in a grocery store and i can only imagine what she's going through every day yeah. oh. oh dang at the HEB I go to, the grocery store, um, I'm so used to helping pack my own groceries. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, no, please stand behind. Yeah, they, the you line. have to and stand. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't understand. I have to help you. Yeah, I have that impulse too, where it was like that the first time I went to an HEB, that's what I, I got did. yelled like, at. They have this like makeshift plastic <laughs> shield between you and yeah. the cashier. And I was like, I walked past it to like grab a bag and start bagging. And they were like, sir, please just stand here in in front of me with the with the plastic shield. And I was just like, oh, OK. Yeah, like, please <laughs> wait to pay after we get everything bagged. Yeah, bag. yeah and then like, they put oh. the receipt It feels like on, I'm at the airport. The yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like airport TSA. security, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huge uh, for all for anybody. I don't know. I don't know where all HEB is, but uh, HEB is like a big grocery yeah. store in Texas. I think it's only yeah. in Texas. Is it? Is it it I not can't... in Dallas though. Oh <gasps> yeah. They don't have crazy. it in Dallas. No. I, I have family in Dallas, and they don't have HEB. It's bullshit. I can't imagine going through this without HEB. Yeah, I know. Like they have been like the best. So uh, we also don't have any sponsors for the show yet. So... <laughs> but HEB, uh, if you can hit us up. <laughs> Uh, Trader Joe's has been really good too. If I can plug another guy, oh, nice. they have they have all their own products, so like it's really easy for them to stay stocked. So yeah. like it's surprisingly well stocked all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean that's Trader cool, Joe's. but like the B in H E B stands for butts, so it, it does stand for butt. <laughs> yep. Is it like Harry Edward butts? Or yeah. Something? Oh it's man, I butt. wish it was Harry butt. I think it's Howard butt <laughs> wait, 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 are you sure it's not? I thought it was. I think it's Howard. It oh, is I now. It was Harry. <laughs> Harry Howard, you know, Same we've difference. all had a it's Howard, two but... now. yeah. <laughs> H -H -A -D -D. Have, have, have the extra breath before it. Do you, uh, guys... right, Jordan, go ahead. I was going to ask, what have you guys been like, um, watching since there's nothing to do outside oh, now? <laughs> oh, I've, oh, I've man. turned to rewatching. Like I went through like all of Brooklyn nine, nine again. I just, it's been like, nice. uh, the comfort Don't... food shows of like, you know, like, I know a lot of people were like rewatching The Office and like just things that I already know are going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of what I've been going yeah. to. Nice. I so um, I finally finished Food Wars uh, seasons nice. one to four. Fun, fun fact. There was an RTA about it, about how my uh, friend was making me watch Food Wars. <laughs> and this was a perfect time for me to finally like uh, actually finish it. And we did. And we were kind of just like, all right. What do we watch next? And it's like, oh God, we're still at home. So we're we watching um Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um nice. and now I'm we're... trying to get them to go through the good place as well. Full Metal Alchemist is nowhere near as horny as Food Wars. No, it's um, not. It's so refreshing. Horny. The food, food horny. horny. Yeah. The, the the boobs are actually drawn correctly in Brotherhood. Thank yeah. God. I thought you were gonna say food wars. Those be like, wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> The they only have thing... pockets, boob pockets. Yeah. Pockets. The most refreshing part about Food Wars is all of the fucking juices that spew everywhere from <laughs> oh the food. God. It's from the food. Oh my it's like delicious God. porks. Mm. But like, it's not, it, it's the food only in like the visuals. Wink. Yeah. Wink. <laughs> Do we have to get Wink. Jordan to watch Food Wars? <gasps> the way you're describing it, I this sounds like a show that's up my alley. I've, I've come this close a couple of times to watching... I don't even know what it's called, but it's the it's the Zootopia but hornier. Oh, yeah, Beastars. Yeah, Beastars. Yeah. I was about to say, speaking of horny. Yeah. <laughs> Beastars, real horny. I yeah. just don't want to turn into a furry. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> or counterpoint, maybe you already are, and you just need to be awakened. It's true. It just yeah, oh. it just needs to be awakened inside me. 2020 is the year of the furry yeah. because <laughs> there is Beastars, um, Animal Crossing um tiger king animal. Oh, tiger yeah. king yeah has like, everyone watched tiger king i feel like i'm the only no, one no i haven't who has i it. haven't oh man 
Okay. This is but I'm, I was I aware have. of Joe Exotic way before this, like a year or two ago. Like Whoa, I was hipster, still watching. Yeah, Aaron. I was like watching YouTube videos on his <laughs> antics. Oh my god! And then I was, yeah, I was, I was hoping like, you oh, say. Okay. I was hoping you say he's like your uncle or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my so same friend who got me into food wars. We were kind of talking about how 2020 is the year of the furry, and we were like, who? Okay, which anime person was the progenitor? of putting furries in anime mm. and i think we ended up kind of talking about mamoru hosoda because oh yeah uh, he the one who did summer wars and who, the who boy invented the, the yif <laughs> jordan no we don't ask the that question the, the, the yif is kind of like that. batman it always existed <laughs> and it always will exist yeah i mean like like summer wars was one thing because like didn't like the main character turned like a rabbit character yeah but it was like a persona but then yeah. oh wait even before um B B boy and the beast there was wolf children, wolf children where like there literally was a canonical like scene in. yeah of the woman having sex with the guy who is actually like half in his werewolf form and all of my friends and i were like on the back of our seats in the oh, movie yeah. theater like is this happening right now it was wild it's like that running. Have you guys ever gone to the, like, I guess like video stores don't exist anymore, but back when they <laughs> did, um, did you ever go to the video store and rent an anime like VHS and like, maybe you knew something about it, but like, you didn't oh, no. know exactly what kind of graphic content was going to be in it when you took it home. <laughs> Oh, no. Has everyone done that? <laughs> or just me on accident that one I time? I think just now maybe you on accident. Yeah. Which, what did you see? What did you get? It yeah. was the Tenshi Muyo movie. Oh, yeah, that was oh. the Tenshi Muyo movie. <laughs> that was like a scene where like Ryoko like starts like licking Tenshi, and I was like, no, well, this isn't no. in the anime. How old were you when you saw this? I don't know. It was just like prime tsunami, so it was like yeah, I was dang. like. 12 or 13. Yeah. Uh, oof. I was a loser. Anyway, I, would just, anyway. I would rent the same thing over and over again. We would just like take it back and like <laughs> exchange it. And it's like, all right, you just scan it again. Cool. Taking it back. I'm going to watch the same Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon one more week. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Yeah. Go to the furry discussion. I think Please. Um, <laughs> the author who did Astro Boy. Yeah, that's right. Had like furry shit oh, come up very recently like his oh, yeah. daughter like hit, granddaughter i think it was yeah like well yeah i mean he already did like a few animes where it's like questionable furry things mm. and then like his granddaughter was like going through his drawers or something his desk and he she finds all of these like horny mouse drawings <laughs> oh yeah it's like all right oh yeah now, that's now, thing. was the mouse horny or the drawings horny in subject or both, both. both. okay Good. The drawing was making like eye contact with the viewer. Oh my! Like, hey, hey. Meta horny. Yeah. Aaron, exactly. do you ever do you ever hear the stories about people who like take furry commissions and like live off that and yes. like, wonder wonder about your career path? Yes, I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> they make you're... bank. It's really weird because like I don't know how or why, but it seems like <laughs> why, a lot of why like... do furries have so much money? Yeah, hey. like, a lot of them. Like a lot of the commissioners are always like doctors or lawyers or something. They're or not Elon artists. Musk. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's weird, but hey. PS it's true. I think yeah. I have PSA: This is not a knock against furries, but also thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah, no, we are. I, I would, I would, I will boldly say we are pro furry. Yeah, uh, furries can support like artists, and like they're not like the choosing beggars that will like. Be like, well, I have to pay you for the yeah, art. Gosh. Like, I'm gonna, supporting I'm, the I'm gonna arts. put this on my YouTube channel that has 13 subscribers. That's more <laughs> than enough payment. Yeah. Also, uh, if if any furries want to sponsor this podcast, like, <laughs> that's cool go. too. Yeah. Support support these artists. <laughs> Buy me a fucking suit and I'll wear it. <laughs> I'll do it. Oh wait, what would you, everybody? What would your persona be? Oh man. Oh, easy. Oh, uh, go first. Uh, like, actually, I said easy, and then um, <laughs> I'm just like fuck. Uh, <laughs> I'm backtracking. Oh, does it have to be like your favorite animal, or is it like an animal it's just you feel an animal like you think? You, yeah, to? yeah, an animal yeah. that you would be, and you can cho choose. Like, I feel like I'd either be a cat or a rabbit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, why not both? 
uh, especially oh, in lieu of Tenchi Muyo, <laughs> yes, the yeah. little okay, creatures of habit. Mine is um, Cat Hamster. Uh, Camster? 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 Cam Camstar? Whoa, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does it have to be two? I can barely think of one. I, I can't pick. I like red pandas one. a lot. You do. Yeah. So. I like it that. They're like lazy sometimes, and they own like a branch and like just sleep there. So, or they'll startle there. each other and they'll fall over. <laughs> like they'll they'll fall for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hate mean, what, What's an animal that's like just a little chubby? I could be like a penguin. A little Ooh. chubby. <laughs> You'd be a cute penguin. <laughs> a penguin, or like um, I like to waddle. A koala, oh, like a, like or a, a quokka. Yeah. Or yeah, oh, quokka, quokka. or a kiwi bird. Dude, no, fuck it. Birds rule. <laughs> fuck it. I want to be a with... dragon. <laughs> oh, I mean, you could be. Yeah, why not, Carrie? Whatever We're supportive here. Desires. I'm a scaly. Is that what they're called? It is actually. <laughs> nah. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm down. Has <laughs> Has anyone ever checked out uh, um, Penn Ward's new show? I wanted to Midnight bring this no. because because right? I watched it and it's a trip. Furries? That's the important <sighs> question. Not really. Not yet. Not so interested. I only. I only watched one episode okay. and it, it's such a trip that I was like, uh, not sure if I wanted to keep watching it, but what, what is it? It's basically is it on Netflix. Yes. It's on Netflix. It's Pendleton Ward's new show. It's called midnight gospel. Okay. Um, as far as I can tell, just based on the first episode, it's essentially a, a podcast or like a short form discussion between uh, two people. It's usually a guest and the uh, um, the main character. Um, basically, he like hops into like different simulations, and that's where the conversation happens. And uh, then he like records it and comes back to his dimension and like broadcasts it. Wow. But uh, hmm. the first episode is with Doctor Drew, which is already a little problematic in this time. Interesting. Um, I, I feel like Dr. Drew's had like such like a roller coaster of public perception over the years. Yes. Um, what has he been up to? <laughs> I haven't telling, seen him in a while. Telling people that like COVID's no big deal, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, is he telling but, people to drink bleach or whatever? He didn't go no, that far. No, he's not that okay. bad. Uh, not yet. He's one step under. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of. But uh, so they spend the whole episode talking about... Um, legalizing marijuana which is like a fine topic but like they get really deep into like meditation and like existentialism Whoa. like a little mm. a little too much and it's a little it, i found it kind of off-putting um also i feel like if you smoke weed and then try to meditate you're just that's just napping <laughs> <laughs> like at that point i'm just asleep so the, the thing is like they're clearly talking but also they have like a backdrop and in the first episode Dr. Drew plays a character named Glasses Man, who's the president, huh. and there's a zombie outbreak. Huh. <laughs> so in the background, Ooh. they're like, every now and then they'll be talking, and then they'll be like, oh, hold on, and then like they'll animate like a stabbing or something. So there's all this like cool visual stuff going on around them as they're talking very casually, and they're like, it's like a lot of action scenes and stuff. Mm. Um, it reminds me, and Isa, I've showed you this. He had a YouTube channel with Ian Jones Courtley um called animation pals oh, yeah. where it was just them kind of like riffing and improvising and then they go in and animate around it um right. check I that out it's it. like a yeah. very early version of this show i feel but it's like oh. it, it's it's a weird concept to bring this this level of yeah, production meta it, it's 20 it's minutes weird. and it's just them having this conversation and then every now and then there's a weird visual gag like a dog pops up and a zombie bites the dog <laughs> and then is they move it, on to the next thing it's weird and i say this i say this to give you credit like do you do you is it is this like the it like, is it it's is it, not is it RTA? RTA? it's not <laughs> no it's okay it, it it it's like if rta if the visuals had nothing to do with what was being discussed like if they're telling a story like on the on the podcast and the visuals did not represent the story in either in any way shape or form okay so it's maybe just, they they had already legalized it and I, that's what i wonder it, it's a it's a weird episode oh to God. start with uh, uh for the first one so i want to watch another one and like and see see what they do and and how it 
how it how it goes because like i was i was kind of left scratching my head with this first one <laughs> too big brained yeah i mean it's it definitely seems interesting uh it, it does make me wonder like do you know when did it come out it was pretty recent right yeah and i and i like everything about it the way it's animated and stuff is beautiful like the the mm. the colors uh it's like it's like kind of trippy um the animation's really solid uh lots of cool gags and um like action stuff like definitely like high budget mm -hmm. um i i said like 10 minutes in the episode i was watching it with my wife i was like you know we could probably just watch this like without sound and be really good because like huh. the conversation that they were having did not grab us at all so mm -hmm. like just i just kept watching because I, I like the way it was animated I'm just gonna I'm gonna imagine this world where you accidentally had like the the commentary track on <laughs> and they were just talking about but I mean yeah I wonder I, I wonder if at any point because I feel like this is probably something that's going on behind the scenes at a lot of companies media companies right now did they have the conversation of like is now the time to put this out oh my yeah. gosh yeah you know like yeah I, I definitely wonder. found myself anything that involves like apocalypse or like oh, you know gosh. mass hysteria stuff i'm just like i'm not gonna watch that right now yeah, i think no. i'm okay for a minute um but i mean so it sounds like it's it's chill enough that it's not like a big deal mm. um, yeah i don't think like the I, I don't think the zombie apocalypse angle of it had anything to do with it because like that gets resolved at the end of the episode so like in the next episode it's just going to be a different like guest in a different oh. simulation with a different backdrop i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure and that's that is what has me interested in seeing the next one not necessarily who's on it and what they're going to talk about but like what is the next backdrop and like what cool animation stuff are they going to do okay huh. that's interesting yeah. i think there's um that does remind me because you mentioned it seemed like it's like a podcast um mm -hmm. reminds me of that Ooh man i'm blanking the show about D, &D but it's based off of there's their a lot of D. Those podcasts and it's not critical role it's the person who is a comedian and he and his friends are doing D, &D. f hmm. is God. it the show on verve uh, are you that's animated yeah you talking oh, about harmon quest harmon quest yes, yes. yes. Uh. right thanks thank you um <laughs> uh there is an interesting discussion uh lately about um making animation based off of kind of existing audio rather than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. animation with new audio if only because the existing audio it's already there so you're kind of cutting off um some portion of pre-production uh yeah. which is i think an interesting way to go about like uh having a production jordan um, you did copyright that idea right <laughs> you are making bank right uh shit <laughs> how, many, how many how many turnips how many bells you got invested in this now oh no <laughs> So yeah, I uh, I mean I started RTA in like 2010. I think the Ricky Gervais show had like either just come out or came out like right after like the first RTA. Whoa. It You're was definitely pioneer. that summer because I started in July 2010. Um, and like I think I feel like it was just a thing that like it all sprung up at, at once because I know Yogscast mm -hmm. was also kind of doing uh stuff mm -hmm. as well like not too long after. So yeah, I don't. Like, do you, do you I, think... I don't know about like the creative merits and like and like you know shortchanging production, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely easy. Yeah, I mean, I can I I will now forever consider you a pioneer. Let me put it yeah. that. That's fine. Yes, please yeah. do. I, in fact, I insist you do. If you, if you if you want to start introducing yourself as media pioneer, uh, I think that's totally that's totally fair. It's I got nice. I got like I got six more months to be a thirty under thirty media luminary. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you intro like um uh, like, like Griffin uh, McElroy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you could be a yeah a, a media pioneer. Yeah. Hey, media hey, media you're media. you're in my thirty under thirty. Oh, thanks. Aww. That means yeah. a lot. That's it's awesome. just That's it's just the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny you bring up the McElroys and um, podcasts uh, being animated because they're uh, adapting Adventure Zone into an animated show. Oh, are they? That's cool. Yeah, That's and nice. I, I think it's going to be more, a, more so the uh, graphic novel that they started yeah, that's being adapted to animation. So it's more like than an adaptation side. of an adaptation. Yeah, I think visually that's what it'll look like, and I think they might script it out more. So I don't think <laughs> okay. it's just like animating the audio. Um, oh, okay. But I have like I remember listening to that show and like 
imagining it as like uh, an animated show and being like, oh man, it'd be so dope to adapt this. So I'm a little jealous that like some other uh, company got it, um, but I'm sure it'll be good. So I'm, I'm sure it'll be good, it. but I, I'll know deep down in my heart that it'd be better if you had done it. Dude, we would have crushed it. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys have no idea. Uh, media luminary. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pioneer. <laughs> no, he, yeah, sorry. Yeah, he. Ha yeah. yeah, we do have to call him a, legally. We have to call him a pioneer. Yeah, I ride boulders uh, for miles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should make that a game sometime. Um, uh, yeah. there was a a fun game. Uh, Jordan, Richard, Cole, and I started doing over text, which was guess the anime based off of these emojis. And I was thinking, what else yeah. can you do that? With? And I was like, oh, guess the SpongeBob episode based off. Oh, of that's a great idea. <laughs> oh. Do they have like a pilgrim? <laughs> they do, I think. Pizza, have, like, a pilgrim, a rock. <laughs> oh Not just a rock, it's a boulder. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could do like the, I, I think there could be like a picket sign emoji. <laughs> and then um, a, a crab. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, I know we want to have a podcast talking about the creative process, but could we just change this and pivot to a SpongeBob fan cast? <laughs> Is it that's only late? like the the first like four seasons? <laughs> yeah, because I haven't seen anything after that. <laughs> oh my god! Man, maybe I should go rewatch SpongeBob. Uh, that that'd be a good one. That's a, that is. I a feel good like idea. I think SpongeBob clips. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I solely function off like Homestar Runner bits, Ed and Eddie episodes, and yes. SpongeBob quotes. Oh yeah, that's get... that's all my brain runs on. I I loved Ed and Eddie so much. I, that we can't just turn into to talking about the <laughs> cartoon. But oh my hey, god! Inspir hey, inspiration is like the stuff to rewatch. It's true. It's the cornerstone of the creative process. It's all animation. We're still on topic. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like without without Homestar Runner, I would not have even started animating. Like Damn. I I I couldn't figure it out until I found this. Um, gosh, I was like listening to like their dvd commentaries and they mentioned um like they did a tech demo of how they they animate with symbols and stuff in flash yeah. in, at, at georgia tech in like 2006 or something um so i looked that up and i don't even think i could find it again but i i saw it and like just them showing how they did it like i was like oh i see so it's just kind of like very simple pieces that you then manipulate you don't have to like yeah. redraw it over and over again mm -hmm. um so that's how i i like that's how i discovered what puppet animation was and then i just Thank did a you. very a very rough version of that um for rtaa and then years later i met uh matt and mike chapman who uh uh hey. do homestar runner yeah homestar and I told, and runner i told them <laughs> i told them that i found this and they were like blown away one that i found it and two that it was useful to someone <laughs> so it's like i really have to thank like oh. them and that demo for my career because i wouldn't have figured it out otherwise oh that's yeah so uh if they want to continue that uh homestar runner if you want to sponsor uh, <laughs> this podcast, uh we literally uh, we'll take money from anybody at this point homestarrunner.net <laughs> it's dot com that's i think the best joke ever <laughs> That's Second a... only to me continuing to ask for sponsors and saying I'll take money for <laughs> That's I like three or four. Carry. Yeah, I hope we never get a sponsor so we can just keep asking for sponsors. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I like it to a point. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll sponsor it. Here's 20 bucks. Gary's gonna spend money. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of but a it... good question. Like, um like what what piece of media got y'all into animation, I guess. Like Oh, How man. did you end up here? Could I try to guess everyone's? Do it. Yes. Quick uh, speed round. Go ahead. Okay. Isa. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank. I'm gonna go with. I have an idea. I also have an idea. <laughs> All right, Harry, <laughs> tell me. You tell me yours. Well. Yeah. I want to say. Power, I want to say uh, Powerpuff Girls. I was gonna say oh, Evangelion. They're good. Are we all any of us right? Well, did Jordan, did you guess? No, it's that those yeah. are way better than anything I can come up with. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Aaron's, Aaron's there. Uh, Aaron, uh, Powerpuff Girls was the one I started drawing when I was like nine with the power yes! how to draw Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carrie, is yours then Dexter's Lab? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, oh really? shit. I would not have yeah. guessed. I had like the there's like that episode where uh, they like the musical episode. I had that on like Dude, they sold like I a had, cassette of it. I had that too. I, I listen to too. it all the time. Yes, that's great. Oh man, we should sing. Hell yeah! Uh, I, I I know most of that by heart. If, if we ever do a bonus episode, that's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's Aaron's get started? Yes, I feel like mine might be hard. Um, yeah, I, is yours definitely an anime or is yours no. like a cartoon? Okay, it's mm. a video game. <gasps> a video oh, game. Oh, yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Gear. Your favorite video game. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really decide like what I wanted to do, like concept wise, until I was like in high school. Because before that, I was like, oh, I want to do a practical job, so I'm not homeless and poor. Um, <laughs> not an art. Yeah. yeah like a plumber. Exactly. Yeah. Like a, like a trade. <laughs> weren't you? Is this why you were in like? Um, weren't you in like? Um, ROTC in in high school. That was just because I didn't want to take gym class. Oh my god, that was the alternative. Yeah, that is really not wanting to take gym class. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of would rather take gym class than like. Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of my high school electives are just like I took it because I didn't want to take X class oh. because of whatever reason. Like I took Latin instead of French or Spanish because it was the only what? language where there's we nothing didn't practical have to speak. about that language. I know. I mean, we didn't have to speak <laughs> Latin in class. In our French and Spanish classes, it was like immersion. So you had to speak in Spanish or French. He said I did the exact same thing. <laughs> I did the exact same thing in community college. Oh yeah, see? I took Latin instead. <laughs> also, I wanted, before concept art, I thought I was going to do um, medical illustration, which is kind of- Dang. Apple Whoa! Phone, so. Yeah, is that like My is that like doing like changed. anatomy drawings and stuff? Yeah, or like, like the posters of like yeah, all that boring. That is very stuff. practical. Hey, that's yeah. a good. That's a good foundation, though. There's a whole major for it at uh, SCAD, the college oh. I went to. Oh, wow. yeah. wild! You can be a medical illustrator, okay. but I didn't do it, obviously. Jor Jordan, I guess you say yours is Homestar Runner. Yeah, yeah, Are Homestar Runner. As far, as, far as cartoons, like that, like. I love it. It's Ed and Eddie. Like that's the one that like. Same. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's I my go-to. It holds up. It holds up. We it does. To Cartoon yeah. Network. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Say, look at us. Yeah, all in the Warner family. Yeah. <laughs> it all worked out in the end, huh? <laughs> it, did. it did. Well, with that, I think that's that's the good. That's a good hour. That's a good forty-five minutes, y'all. I think. Dope. That was fun. That was fun. That was great. Well, thanks everyone for listening to I Have Notes. Uh, we you should check out our IMD pa IMDb pages. They're surprisingly <laughs> full. <laughs> I'm going another, to say another one more thing full. Another one more <laughs> thing full. Make sure you like and subscribe. LOL. <laughs> Sorry. Rate us five stars. <laughs> Eric wow. is feeding me lines. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's a, if there's a bell, hit, ring it. If there's a, a yeah, just subscribe. Like click on everything on the page, and you're yeah. good. Yeah, and you're D good. You're really supporting us this way, including the thumbs down one. Any any reaction is a good reaction. <laughs> I don't think that's very that constructive. <laughs> you should like uh, it, but then tell us what you didn't like about it. Yeah. Also, Eric, Eric just uh, <laughs> only thumbs up. Only thumbs up. Yeah, oh, only thumbs up, but give us notes. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd love we'd love to hear what you think we could do differently. If there's something you want to, you know, certain topics you want us to cover. Um, also, not many other shows tell you to do this. Go ahead and unsubscribe from other channels besides us. <laughs> um, if you just want to focus on us, I'd really appreciate it. No, don't do that. Yeah, positivity. Positivity. <laughs> PMA. Positive <laughs> mental attitude. I'm nice. all about. P we can have an PMA. entire episode on PMA. Well, Let's do it. I like it. Um, Maybe next week. Yeah. <gasps> And with that, thank you all very much. Be safe and uh, insert catchphrase here.